I have a couple of popular videos on my channel where I take a look at some affordable crimping tools. The most recent one being Volog 425 where I looked at the iWIS Mini 2820M. Uh, this is a dual action crimping tool meaning that you have to crimp first the insulation and then the electrical connection. It's cheap, it works, but it does uh, require a bit of uh, extra work, a bit of extra attention for correct positioning of the crimp on the die, careful applying of force and just a lot of practice on the user side to be able to get a usable crimp out of this. My viewers recommended in the comments that I should also take a look at the ratcheting crimp tool from iWIS, which isn't that much more expensive but should be easier to use, less fiddling will crimp both uh, parts of the crimp at the same time, uh, it won't let you apply too much pressure which would crash the crimp, so overall this should provide a better user experience and better crimps, at least in theory. The model number for this is uh, IBIS uh, 3220M, comes in similar packaging, once again there is uh, great information on the packaging itself, uh, it lists the supported crimp types, the uh, wire sizes versus the uh, correct slot into the die, as well as a bunch of uh, tips and tricks on uh, how to get a uh, good crimp out of this tool. The tool is rated for AWG32 up to AWG20 wire size in um, square millimeters that would be 0.03 up to 0.52 square millimeters and for my particular use case this is the range of crimps and wire sizes that I commonly use at my electronics workbench. And by the way, should you decide to get one of these after watching my review, there will be some affiliate links in the description of this video with places where you can order this tool, so do check them out. Construction-wise, like I mentioned earlier, this is a ratchet type crimp, uh, quite a weak spring action on the mechanism. Uh, I do prefer a bit more feedback in the spring, uh, but that should not affect the quality of the crimps, it's just a personal preference of mine. There are rubber handles which uh, feature this uh, lock mechanism in here. Um, this will prevent the handles uh, from sliding on the metal handle. That's a really nice feature and attention to detail. You'd have to watch out to not get your fingers uh, pinched uh, in the um, ratchet mechanism. Uh, because it just sits on the handle itself. But before we continue with the review of this tool, let me just quickly mention the sponsor of this video, PCBWay.com, a professional PCB manufacturer with excellent quality and fast turnaround times. Right now they're running their fifth annual PCB design contest, so if you have some PCB designs that you would like to submit, why not do it for a chance to win one of the juicy cash prizes. You could also try them out for many of their other services like 3D printing, CNC machining and manufacturing services in general. Check out their website linked below. Looking closely at the crimp tool, we first noticed that uh, there is a thin coating of oil uh, protecting, protecting it from uh, rust in storage. I believe I'm going to wipe that off. Um, we also noticed the die is a separate piece from the rest of the tool, uh, possibly a different metal, but it's not designed to be removable. I don't see any machining marks on the die itself. It could be a die cut uh, piece, uh, part of a stamping process or something like that, which doesn't produce the most accurate die when compared to uh, one that has been CNC'd, but it does make the product a lot cheaper. Now, if their uh, process is tightly controlled and their stamping die is of high precision, there is no reason why we can't get a usable tool uh, using that process. Also, by looking uh, closely at the at how the die part is constructed, we noticed it's thicker uh, when compared to the um, previous tool I removed, and this means it will be able to crimp uh, both parts of a connector at the same time, the electrical crimp and the insulation crimp in a single action. The actual list of supported uh, crimp types is available from the manufacturer and I will drop a link to this in the description below for you to check it out. Now time for some crimping. I have here some GST PH crimps and connectors. These are 2.0 millimeter pitch connectors. Pretty small crimps but not the smallest I need and I'm gonna be using some 30 AWG wire for this test. 
Uh, be aware that the wire insulation thickness is an important factor here. So if you plan to use silicon wire, which typically has thicker uh, insulation, you will most certainly be forced to switch to the next available die size on the chart. Here, for example, you can see two AWG30 wires where the one on the left is silicon and the one on the right is PVC. And there's a clear difference in insulation thickness. You will also need some kind of wire stripping tool and there will be some trial and error for getting the correct stripping length for a particular type of connector. I'll put a link in the description to the tool that I am using. Uh, I feel like this is a perfect match because it fits the same size of wire thicknesses as the crimp tool. So the key point here is to strip enough of the wire so that it's completely crimped by the electrical part of the connection but not so much that it extends into the connector causing trouble on insertion so like i said a lot of trial and error until you get it right so i did a number of crimps to get used to the tool and before taking a look at each resulting crimp uh, let me mention that I do notice an improvement in the crimping process due to the ratchet mechanism. First, it is much easier now to insert the crimp into the die, apply some light pressure and just trigger that first ratchet step to lock it in place. Now you can insert the wire to the correct depth and you can crimp in a single action. So there's definitely an improvement here, no doubt about it. Now let's take a look at some of the crimps that I did. So this is crimp number one. For this one I used the slightly thicker 30 AWG silicon wire which resulted in too much thickness of the insulation. Now this caused the crimp to deform badly. It, I wouldn't be able to use this crimp, I wouldn't be able to insert it into the plastic housing. If I wouldn't have thinner insulation cable, uh, I would probably try to crimp it on the next die size uh, for a better result. On my second and third attempt, I switched to the thinner insulation AWG30. I believe this is just PVC insulation and now I started getting better results. The crimp is still deformed when coming out of the crimp tool, but I think these uh, crimps are usable. You can just straighten them and they, then they can be inserted into the plastic housing of the connector. On my fourth attempt, I switched to the next die size, the 1.3 mm one, which started producing better crimps, at, at least on the insulation part due to a better fit, uh, but this introduced a new problem. On this die, uh, the length or the thickness of the die is higher than that of the length of the connector, so you have to push the crimp deeper into the die to avoid accidentally crimping the outside connector part. So I think we can draw a few conclusions from these tests. Number one, picking the correct die size will greatly improve the crimp quality. Number two, picking the correct wire size, especially thickness of insulation, will greatly improve the crimp quality as well. Number three, when you notice uh, crimp deformation, um, try moving to the next larger die size. Number four, the ratchet mechanism and the two-in-one crimping action is definitely an improvement uh, in the crimping process. It makes your life easier and your allows you to just crimp much faster without having to worry so much about the correct pressure to apply to the tool. It basically removes some variables from the process that were present with this tool. Now, can I recommend this tool over the uh, standard non-ratchet one? Absolutely, it does a better job, especially considering the cost, but let's not forget that this is still a budget tool which will give you uh, usable results without breaking the bank, but it will not be able to outmatch the $700 or more original Molex crimping tool. There are limitations introduced by the precision of the die used on this tool, so keep that in mind. It's perfectly usable for hobby level, you might need to redo a bunch of uh, crimps until you get a good one, uh, but you get better at it after you've done uh, a number of crimps. So that should pretty much answer the question of uh, which one of these you should get. Uh, definitely go for the ratchet one and unless you have some very specific reason to go for the non-ratchet mechanism, but I just can't think of one right now. That was all for today. I appreciate the fact that uh, my viewers recommend that I should try this model in the comments below. I would really like to hear your feedback. Let me know if you own this uh, crimp tool, uh, if you plan to order one just let me know in the comments below. If you'd like to support the channel for the awesome content I make, you can start by hitting the like button and you can also join my Patreon for as little as $1 per month. 
Thank you for watching and I'll be seeing you next time.